It's apparently, I don't know, on the record somewhere. Um, Masters and Johnson, now we're moving forward to the 1950s. Masters and Johnson were upsuck skeptics, which, which is also really fun to say. <laughs> they didn't buy it. And they decided, being Masters and Johnson, that they would get to the bottom of it. They brought women into the lab, I think it was five women, and outfitted them with cervical caps containing artificial semen. And in the artificial semen was a radio-opaque substance such that it would show up on an x-ray. This is amazing. This is the 1950s. Uh, anyway, these uh, women sat in front of an x-ray device and they masturbated and the Masters and Johnson looked to see if the uh, semen was being sucked up. Did not find any evidence of upsuck. You may be wondering, how do you make artificial semen? Uh, <laughs> I have an answer for you. I have two answers. You can use flour and water or cornstarch and water. Um, I actually found three separate recipes in the literature. My favorite being the one that says, uh, you know, they have the ingredients listed and then, you know, in a recipe it'll say, for example, yield two dozen cupcakes. Uh, this one said, yield one ejaculate. <laughs> um, there's another way that orgasm might boost fertility. This one involves men. Um, sperm that sit around in the body for a week or more start to develop abnormalities that make them less effective at headbanging their way into the egg. Uh, British sexologist Roy Levin has speculated that this is perhaps why men evolved to be such enthusiastic and frequent masturbators. <laughs> he said, if I keep tossing myself off, I get fresh sperm being made, um, which I thought was an interesting idea, theory. So now you have an evolutionary excuse. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. There is considerable evidence for upsuck in the animal kingdom. Um, pigs, for instance. In Denmark, the Danish National Committee for Pig Production found out that if you, if you stimulate, sexually stimulate a sow while you artificially inseminate her, you will see a 6% increase in the farrowing rate, which is the number of piglets produced. So they came up with this plan, this uh, five-point stimulation plan for the sows. And they had the farmers, they, you know, there's posters they put in the barn, and they gave, had a DVD, and I got a copy of this DVD. <laughs> and this is my unveiling, because I'm going to show you a clip. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, okay, now here we go. See, in it, la la la, off to work. And all looks very innocent. Okay, he's going to be doing things with his hands that the, the boar would use his snout, lacking hands. Okay. This is the, the boar, the boar has a very odd courtship repertoire. This is to mimic the weight of the boar. You should know the clitoris of the pig inside the vagina. So this may be sort of titillating for her. Here we go. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> and the happy result. I love this video. There's a point in this video towards the beginning where they zoom in for a close-up of his hand with his wedding ring, like as if to say, it's okay, it's just his job. He really does like women. <laughs> okay, now I said when I was in Denmark, my host was named Anne Marie, and I said, so why don't you just stimulate the clitoris of the pig? The, you know, why don't you have the farmers do that? That's not one of your five steps. She said, uh, I have to read you what she said because I love it. She said, it was a big hurdle just to get farmers to touch underneath the vulva. So we thought, let's not mention the clitoris right now. <laughs> um, shy but ambitious pig farmers, however, can purchase, a, this is true, a sow vibrator that hangs on the sperm feeder tube to vibrate. Um, because as I mentioned, the, clitor the clitoris is inside the vagina. So possibly, you know, a little more arousing than it looks. <laughs> Um, and I also said to her, now these sows, I mean, you may have noticed there, the sow doesn't look to be in the throes of ecstasy. And she said, um, you can't make that conclusion because uh, animals don't register 
pain or pleasure on their faces in the same way that we do. They tend to, pigs for example are like, more like dogs, they use the upper half of the face. The ears are very expressive, so you're not really sure what's going on with the pig. Primates on the other hand, we use our mouths more. Um, this is the ejaculation face of the stump-tailed macaque. Uh, <laughs> And, interestingly, this has been observed in female macaques, but only when mounting another female. <laughs> Masters and Johnson in the 1950s, they decided, okay, we're going to figure out the entire human sexual response cycle, from arousal all the way through orgasm in men and women, everything that happens in the human body. Okay, with women, a lot of this is happening inside. This did not stop. Masters and Johnson, they developed a, uh, an artificial coition machine. And this is basically a penis camera on a motor. There's a phallus, clear acrylic phallus with a camera and a light source attached to a motor that's kind of going like this. And um, the woman would have sex with it. And that's what they would do. Pretty amazing. Um, sadly, this device has been dismantled. This just kills me. Cause, not because I wanted to use it. I wanted to, I wanted to see it. Um, one fine day, Alfred Kinsey decided to calculate the average distance traveled by ejaculated semen. This was not idle curiosity. Uh, Dr. Kinsey um, had heard, and there was a theory kind of going around at the time, this being the 1940s, that the force with which semen is thrown against the cervix was a factor in fertility. And Kinsey thought it was bunk, so he got to work. Uh, he got together in, in, his, in his lab uh, 300 men, a measuring tape, and a movie camera. <laughs> and, in fact, he found that uh, in three quarters of the men, the stuff it just kind of slopped out. It wasn't spurted or thrown or ejected under great force. However, the, um, the record holder landed just shy of the eight-foot mark, which is impressive. <clears throat> In, <laughs> yes, exactly. Sadly, he's anonymous. His, his name is not mentioned. Um, in, in his write-up write of this experiment, in his book, Kinsey wrote, two sheets were laid down to protect the oriental carpets. <laughs> Which is my second favorite line in the entire oeuvre of Alfred Kinsey, my favorite being, cheese crumbs spread before a pair of copulating rats We'll distract the female, but not the male. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs>